Okay, so welcome everybody to the teaching and learning call for Wednesday, August 19th. And I will be facilitating today because um, Trisha was uh, snowed under at her institution. And I believe Charles was pretty busy as well. So, um, so I'll be kind of leading us through our agenda today. Um, we'll start off with a few announcements. Um, the Sakai 21 feature freeze is happening this week. It was actually um, originally scheduled for Friday. And so what we're calling it this week is, is instead of frozen, it's slushy. Um, <laughs> it should firm up by the end of the week. So um, we are still trying to, you know, target that earlier timeline for a, a Dotto release. So, um, so we're hoping to get it all um, finalized in the branch cut very soon. Um, so that's happening this week. And um, another uh, thing happening this week is that I'm looking for volunteers for anybody who would like to be on the Sakai Virtual Conference planning team. Um, so if you're interested and, uh, and you have a few free cycles, please let me know between now and uh, the end of this week um, that you'd like to participate. And uh, I'd be happy to, um, to sign you up. Um, we'll try to keep meetings to a minimum um, and do as much as we can via Slack and email. So um, hopefully it won't be too much of a time burden for those of you um, who are interested in participating. So please do let me know. Um, we are still planning to do the um, the virtual conference in November timeframe like we typically do. So that's kind of, we're a little bit condensed on our timeline because we got a somewhat late start, but um, hopefully we'll be able to pull it together quickly. Uh, does anybody else have any other announcements that they would like to make? Okay, so we'll move on to um, our two agenda items today. So first we're gonna have a quick demo of the dashboard from Adrian, and we're gonna keep that to around 10 minutes or so, um, just as kind of an update um, to, so he can show us uh, what he's been working on. And then um, we'll spend about 35 minutes or so um, on Jira Palooza. So we have some Jiras here that people have contributed to the list. If there are any others that um, that you want to try to get to, feel free to put them in there. If we don't get them to get to them today, we will um, pick them up the next time we have a Jirapalooza. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Adrian. Adrian, would you like to share your screen to show us what you've got so far with the dashboard? Yep. Will do, yep. All right. So I just gave you presenter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, you seeing that? Yep. Right, great stuff. Right, okay. So um the main thing I want to show you all from uh from last time I did a demo on the TNL group is the uh layout templates and this image. So First of all, this is so this is this is this is inside Sakai now, right? So up to now you've only ever seen this stuff running inside Storybook. Yeah. So over the last week, and this is part of the reason why the freeze date has become, you know, the slushy date, is uh, mainly because of you know some kind of like problems I had just hooking things into the Sakai back end. You know, I, I kind of you know, expected there would be a bit of turbulence, you know. Um I've had to write some back-end services and things for the task widget, so on and so forth, right? So it's mainly my fault that we've uh, we've slipped a bit on the freeze date. We've now got a slushy date and the freeze date coming up. So, um, so yeah, this is all inside Sakai now, right? So um, the first thing I'll show you, before I show you this, this layout thing, I'll show you if I go into um, my home, click on dashboard. Right, so this is, this is, this is live. You know, this is like Sakai data now, right? Um, I, think, oh, I was trying to save my eyesight. Forget about that. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, so this is live data, right? So, nope, not, not now. Thank you. Actually, I'll just disable that for a minute. All right. Yeah. Um, so this is the task, the task, task widget. This is a, this is a task inside a Sakai database table now. And, uh, my shopping task. Um, 
I've hooked this in with assignments now. So when you create an assignment, um, it creates a task, right? Uh, when you delete an assignment, it deletes the task, so on and so forth. If you update the assignment, it updates the task. It'll update the title of this and so on and so forth. Yeah, but so only the task widget is literally only working at the moment with uh, assignments. Yeah, and that's probably what's going to go in uh, for the for the pull request, right? So we may be able to add. Well, I'm hoping we're going to add more, you know, more tools uh, into this um, from the, you know, from the from the freeze date from the from the pull request up to you know the first release. Yeah, um, this is the calendar widget. So you know, you've got like like the, like the current one really, but this is a new implementation of it. Yeah, um, you've got assignments links in it, and we've got these these kind of new rounded kind of like um, styles on things. Um, these are announcements from the announcements tool. Uh, these links take you into the announcement. Back again. Um, down here, now this is this is kind of crazy, right? So this is this is basically um, this stuff's coming from the grade book, right? From all of your sites uh, where you've got grade book installed, yeah. Um, so as you can see. You end you know, with a lot of stuff in here, right? So there's probably needs to be some a little bit of thought uh, put to this grades widget on how to, uh, you know, limit the amount, maybe page it or whatever. I don't know yet. But you know, as soon as I hook this up to Sakai for real, then suddenly you see all this kind of stuff, right? You know what I mean? This is just some calculation. I'll fix this. Well, this is this is a calculation I'm doing actually on the um, on the student submissions. That have been that have been graded, right? So I'm just doing like a cut. This is the course average, right, for that for that assignment, yeah. But yeah, this is all live data. This is all. This is all. So when you refresh it, this is coming straight from, you know, from uh, Edge Services, from the from the from the Greybook service, yeah. Just loaded, just like that, yeah. Same with forums. It's just the usual thing you'd expect. It takes you into forums like the current widget does. So all that stuff's kind of working, hopefully. Um, in a, in a really similar fashion, this took a while. The tasks widget took a while to you know to get all the back end services working properly. You know, create um, you know update and delete and all that stuff. Yeah, um, so I had to do quite a bit of debugging on this, so that slowed me down a tad. So yeah, so that's the so that's 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 the home dashboard, right? So I'll, I'll switch across um, back to the uh, back to the course dashboard. Okay, right. So um, first thing I'll show you, and this is the main difference from last time. So last time people were saying it would be nice to have templates like Jira, right? So, so if you click Edit Dashboard, uh, click Layout. I need thumbnails for these, but so there's numbers at the moment. I know, I know you can't tell what you're picking at the minute, but there will be thumbnails. So you get a change in layout, yeah. So this is the course overview over here, right? Which you can edit to your heart's content, yeah. Um, this is the short description of the site, which again, you can edit and save. Um, yep. When you change, when you change the template that gets saved back into a site property, right? So, um, it's not a personal property. It's a site property. That's, that's, that's where that gets, that gets stored. So there's a, there's a chunk of JSON in a site property with all this kind of information in it. Uh, you click edit dashboard, you can, you know, you can have more widgets. Um, ah, that didn't work. That's good. Add a widget, please. Uh, tasks should not be there. I need to get rid of that because tasks doesn't really make that much sense inside the actual site or like forums. Um, we'll add, uh, we'll add grades. The grades is now just for this site. Oh, play pen, play pen, play pen, play pen, blah, blah, blah. Course average. So here, here it's, it's it, the view's a lot better, right? There's not as many, um, there's not as many rows as in this synoptic tool, obviously, you know, but still, this, this still could grow right, really long. So I need a strategy. I need to maybe, maybe go and talk to the UX group about this, to, maybe to Chanel or something or, yeah, there's a bit of scope for some kind of UI thought around uh, this grades widget. So, so again, set... um, 
for for that limitation, I'd suggest looking at the existing announcements uh, options, the Synoptic Announcements tool, because there you can choose um, you know, how many announcements <clears throat> into the past you want to display, whether you want to display just a title or the title and details, uh, that kind of thing. Um, and it also, I think it has an option to paginate, uh, but I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Yeah, we'll do. Thank you. It's a good idea. Uh, any other ideas like that from other tools uh, anybody's got? That'd be, that'd be really useful, you know. Because um, you know, grades grades needs to be filterable by course as well, so you can see all your assignments in a, all your grades in a specific course. Yeah. So you mean back here in the in the home dashboard, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, kind of Laura, could you, could you clarify the audience that you're talking about? I mean, so you're thinking about a student audience or a faculty audience because they might have different needs. That's a good point. I was thinking of students. If I'm a, a student on a dashboard, I want my dashboard to provide everything I'm taking at the same time. So as, you know, all the assignments and all the courses. But why do I need to go into the course in order to filter that down to a specific course when I'm right there already? This is instructor only because it's showing you the course yeah. average for all students. So this would not be shown to students at the at the moment. Yeah, we, we kind of took we, we spoke about this and uh, we came to the conclusion that it would be dangerous to have the dashboard uh, just suddenly show students grades in case they, you know the other student next to them or whatever so i think we're going to limit this initially to to the instructor this particular widget i had a yeah. question about sorry no i was i was i was just going to say it's uh it's what students want to see and they will they will be able to hide their stuff just like anything else. You know, when you go up to the checkout counter, you decide whether to put your hand over the reader when you enter your credit card or debit card pin or not. If you don't care, you don't cover your hand. It's I don't I don't think well, it's no, a the, big deal. You shouldn't be showing the class average for all students to all students. I don't think that's appropriate. Uh, you oh, know, no, 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 it doesn't student. mean the class average, it's just that, the grades. Yeah. No, that's what this is showing. This is showing the class average for, from the grade book for all students. And I don't think that's appropriate to reveal to students. Uh, this isn't the, the same list we were just looking at. Where's the one yeah. with playpen? This is it. Yeah, this this, this oh, has got okay. all of them in it. This is, this is your home dashboard. So if I go back to the course dashboard, that's, that's the one you're talking about, Laura. Yep. So I don't need to re-add it because I didn't save it. There we go. Ah, uh, thank you. So it does show the course average there. Not what well, you want students it, to see. Yeah. Couldn't it show <laughs> the students' individual average on there? Yeah, I mean that. It? Yeah, that that'd be. I mean that that wouldn't be hard to do at all, but. Uh, at another TNL call, there was a lot of pushback against the idea that um, a student, you know, would have to know to cover something, right? The first time they loaded the dashboard, you know, they, they'd, they'd have to mm -hmm. know that that was going to flash up, you know, and uh, about the, you know, data protection kind of like concerns around it. So I just backed off from it, but it, it wouldn't be hard to do. I mean, it's just I mean, it's backed just, off. Maybe it's closed by default, you know, maybe you actively have to click on it to I mean, open it. But it's closed by default. I yeah, don't. So for me, right. I on. don't really see how this is valuable to students because that data is in the grade book. If the class average for that student, if the you know the current course grade for that student is shown, or if the instructor is using categories, those av you know those percentages are going to show up to the student in the grade book, and I think that's a more appropriate place for that um, than showing it on the home page of the site. Uh, you know, as Adrian mentioned, the privacy concern for the student sitting in a room with another student and opening the course and the other student can see all the grades. I don't think that's good. 
Tiffany, there's really no way to know except to poll students on what they want to see here. But I guarantee you that students want us to surface whatever progress markers we can on their very first page. And if it's a widget that's closed and they open it, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. If it's not the average in the course or the, you know, if it's some other marker of their progress that the instructor has given them or, you know, let's find out from students because they want to see their grades. It was my understanding from the focus groups that the students were confused by this widget. Another, another thing that um, came out of the focus groups was that students tend to like bookmark like the grade book tool and things, and they just literally click on that bookmark and go straight to the grade book and then leave Sakai afterwards. <laughs> that, was, that was one thing I, I heard a comment. <laughs> yeah, well, in the focus groups, I mean, a lot of the students, um, were, they were looking at, at a mock up that was designed more for the faculty. So there was a reason yeah. why they were confused because it wasn't really a student view that we had for them to, to look at. Um, but we did hear. Um, from students that they wanted to be able to kind of get in and check the relevant information as quickly as possible and get out. You know, they, they want it kind of all there at their fingertips. Um, although some students did have a little bit of hesitation about having their course grade easily seen by other people. So um, I think that's something we're just going to have to kind of try to get more feedback from directly from students, maybe do some surveys and, and some A-B testing of you know, different layouts to see which ones are preferable. Um, but the whole idea of a dashboard is to surface those things and yeah, not yeah, have, yeah, have yeah, you know, yeah. to navigate to different places. So, I mean, this will be, I, this. it sounds like this would be something that would have to be um, kind of lobbied for as, a, as an additional feature after after the after the proper freeze day, one day because we need to it sounds like we need to do some round tripping on on requirements and design for it i think it would be good to have it in the home dashboard but not on yeah. the course course yeah, dashboard because yeah. this dashboard should be replacing the overview page there shouldn't be yeah. both an overview and a dashboard yeah i agree yeah so i mean so the student made us log in they, they should you know in, in an ideal world they should be able to go to their home dashboard and see all the stuff they want to see, then bail out of Sakai, right? And that'll be the, yeah. the ideal. Yeah, yeah that'll be, yeah. Um, one other question I had is, is it possible to have the image on your dashboard and not have it show up in the tool menu? Because that's an extra item for uh, keyboard and screen reader users have to navigate past that yeah. just to get down to the tools. Uh, yeah, well, I yeah, so I'm using the um, I'm just using existing functionality, which is the site icon, right? So all I'm doing right. is I'm saving yeah, I'm saving that picture back. I've not shown you that yet, but I'm, I save that picture back, and then it gets stored as the icon. So yeah. to do that, I would I, have I'm to add yeah, I'd have to add some extra um, an extra kind of column into the uh, into the site table and with a different URL in it and things. So yeah, I that's that's why I think you know we disable the. Uh, site icon for courses and only yeah. allow it for for project sites uh, uh, because it, it, it creates you know additional um but content that a, people have to get yeah. past yeah i agree i mean if that's a property if that's if it's a property that controls that and that's 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 an easy one right I, but i don't know if it is or not i don't know if they, i don't know if we've got like a sakai property where you can say you know allow you know show the uh show the site icon in the tool menu i could look at that well, there, there is a property to prevent the site icon from being input uh, for, you know, s certain site types. But I don't know if it, it would prevent, you know, if that, yeah, I'm, I'm if that, that icon yeah. is being fed in from the, the dashboard instead of being manually um, selected and, you know, entered into uh, a field. Um, I think that would probably be behave differently. Yeah. Yeah. So we can probably dig into that more on the accessibility call or maybe a more focused accessibility um, testing session. But we are um, kind of trying to tie box this part of the discussion. So um, does anybody have any last thoughts, comments? Um, 
questions about the dashboard template concept? I think we need we need uh, we need thumbnails. This is something, but that's something that can go in after the freeze, right? So, um, so I'd like thumbnails here instead of these numbers. Yeah, some kind of thumbnail. Yeah. Or well, that can go in after. That can, that, you know, that can be a bug, right? We can call that a bug. We need we need thumbnails, right? So, <laughs> um, that's the main oh. thing from my. Yeah, it, it looks great. I I really like it, and um, and the idea is that it would replace the overview tool. Um, so yes. hopefully yep. people can, you know, give them kind of the choice to turn on one or the other, but we're hoping that people will just turn off overview and, and use dashboard instead. I think yes. it, dashboard should be the default and overview should not be on by default. I think dashboard should be your top tool, um, you know, in tool order.xml. And uh, and then just if they want to uh, turn on overview, they don't like the dashboard, then they can do that. I I think it's better uh, than yeah. overview. And you know, if the point is to replace it, uh, we should replace it and leave the old one as an option instead of vice versa. Yeah, that's a good point. I would agree with that. Yeah. So I mean, I have to. I have to. This is some. This is another thing I have to. I have to do. Yeah. Well, this can. This can wait till after the freeze day as well. So what. I'm, what I'm planning on doing is, um, when you initially um, load a course, a course dashboard, if that property is not set with a JSON in it, what I'll do is I'll look up the overview tool. I'll find the overview tool and I'll find all the uh, tools that are uh, laid out on it, and I'll create a, an initial default layout from that basically on the first load so we won't have to do a database migration or anything like that which is which is good you know that, that won't be necessary so i have a strategy for that and will that behave sort of how um gradebook and gradebook classic worked in tandem where updating one automatically updates the other no no it won't no Definitely not. No, I won't be. I won't be writing uh, layout changes back to the overview uh, page. No, no, I won't do that. It'll be an, an initial thing. So you'll get your initial, whatever your initial uh, course uh, overview layout is. You'll see that in the dashboard until you decide to change it as an instructor. But yeah, it won't feed back. No, that'll be messy. I'd imagine. I don't know. I don't, I don't feel comfortable about doing that. I've got to say. <laughs> So, so what would happen with import from site uh, when you import from an old course? Would dashboard pick up at that point the overview content and replace overview with dashboard? You mean refresh the layout? Is that that's what you're saying, right? Well, so so well, if you're, I'm you're talking about content in the like the site description, right, Tiffany? Like if yeah, people have edited I, that. Right. So oh, yeah, people have created up. a site in a past semester. Uh, their pre previous site's going to have overview in it. So if they do an import from site uh, and it brings in content, I would hope that it would bring in the content to dashboard and dashboard would replace overview automatically you know, in the new site. So just to be clear, are we, are, are we talking about the way that that site's overview page has been laid out, i.e. the tools that are in it. Is that what we're talking about? Or, or are we talking about the actual textual content? Like, yeah, I think like this she's talking stuff? about content, right? Both, both the content right. and the and the uh, current uh, synoptic tools right, well, that this, are enabled this, on it. Yeah, well, this stuff here, so, so the, the image, uh, the overview, and the short description are dynamically loaded every time, right? They're not stored in some JSON, right? The only thing that goes in that JSON thing I keep talking about is just the layout. So it's a, one, one, it says uh, you're using template one, two, or three, and uh, this, these are the widgets you've got in each column, right? That's all that goes in that JSON. So you definitely get this. This will come from. This comes dynamically from the uh, the site object, you know, from the database. So if you've done an import, then you know the the uh, the uh, de you know the the site you've copied from that that becomes this this now becomes the you know the overview um, text and so on. Yeah. So that's that'll be fine. Um, as for as for doing the layout, what you'd uh, you, under the scheme I've just described, what you'd have to do, you'd have to delete that site property with the current JSON in it, 
And then the next time anybody ran the course dashboard, it'd refresh that with the overview tools layout. So no, I'd have well, to do something different with that. No, I mean, because you were talking about if you have an existing course with content in it, after this upgrade occurs, the dashboard will initially take the content from overview and port it in. Just the I'd layout, to... just the layout. OK, so it won't take the content. I mean, this this content is coming from the site long description. Is that yeah. correct? In, inside long, long and short. Yeah, long and short, yeah, and, okay. the, and the icon, yeah. OK. So that'll be fine. That 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 bit be fine. But uh, you know the the, the way out, it's the way out stuff, right? That's getting stored in the site property, right? So if you wanted to, so let's just let's just say that like you set you, you've set your course up, right? And then uh, you know somebody goes in and they run the course dashboard, right? Then what's going to happen at that point is the course the, the course dashboard code is going to it's going to look up in the current site. It's going to find the overview page it's going to look up all the tools inside there and it's going to it's going to construct that json right with with the widget layout corresponding to that and then it's going to store it as a site property if after that the instructor said actually i want to import stuff from this other site right and that somehow you know changed the layout of the overview page right change what tools are in it and stuff right then that will not be reflected in the course dashboard you'd have to go in and just delete that property and it'd get refreshed. But it's not that big a deal because all you have to do is just go and change the widgets that are here, right? This stuff would come across. So the overview, the the image, and uh, the short description, they would come, yeah? Uh, but the widget layout might be slightly different. But all you have to do is just move them around and save them, and you're done again. Or you could delete the site property. Or I could write something, uh, write a part of the um, you know import from site where I actually refreshed the JSON. I mean, there's, there's lots of options around that, but I don't know how useful that will be. Um, I don't I, know. Go on. What I'm thinking of is when you ultimately replace um, overview with dashboard and get rid of the old overview, all of your yep. previous sites that had overview are going to need to somehow now have dashboard that looks similar to their previous overview so that it can be imported cleanly into new sites. Um, so at some point, when when overview goes away, dashboards got to replace it in all existing sites that had overview and do not have dashboard. Right. Uh, isn't, right. Template, that data isn't the, the first users. template is is basically what the overview default layout is? Right. Isn't that right? Yeah. So if you make that template the default in your system, then it's going to do that. Well, I mean, not necessarily. So it sounds like this um, process of bringing in the constructing the dashboard still requires you to visit the overview. So if overview is gone completely from the system, somehow all of those old sites that had it need to replace it with the dashboard with that whatever that layout is, right? Right. So, so, so you're basically saying that if if um, if you run some kind of database script where you just remove the overview page, right, and all that kind of information that, that's in there, right, then the course dashboard won't won't have anything to refer to. Is that what you're basically saying? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, right. at the at that point, you're going to need some kind of conversion script to send all of the overview content into a new dashboard for every site that has it. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Mm. But I mean, what content is on overview other than the orientation of the widgets? I mean, the site description is the, the content that you would be editing and that's gonna be saved with the site description. I, I guess I don't understand what content is lost other than the layout. Layout, of the layout. I suppose it's um, familiarity of layout. Yeah. Is the, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go to one of your old sites and suddenly see a totally different construction of your homepage, right? So this, this so this is so Wilma, you uh, we were discussing the other day. You were saying that you would like this layout to be the default, right? Because otherwise, people aren't going to see anything new. So what what Tiffany is kind of saying, right, is that that's more the layout that people would expect, or something like that, right? when they first come in. Yeah, I mean, I think it, 
the ease of switching layouts is it makes it kind of it's not hard to switch it back no, <laughs> i just think it would but, be good to see something different because people might not even realize that it's a new tool if it looks just like the old one see my concern is that people don't like their stuff to change on them on their behalf without them doing something um and i think that uh that our users would be upset if suddenly their layout changed when they visit all their all their sites. Um, you know, at, at some point, overview is going to go away, and and dashboard will replace it. Hopefully, you know, completely. So, at that point, I think the dashboard in those old courses should look like they used to look. And in some cases, instructors have moved those widgets around um, or had them moved around on their behalf. Uh, and so, you know, in those cases, I think it should reflect that as well. No. However, no. there's been a lot that's changed in going into Sakai 20 that looks different in legacy courses. And that's that's not created a great deal of upset with with faculty they just go okay so we're into a new version of sakai and i maybe it's because lamp changes every update we update and so it may be that our people are used to changes when the updates come but format changes on all kinds of tools change when the updates happen so if if the overview tool is still there but stealth it's still visible in classes that had it previously, right? So if Dashboard is a yeah. new tool and Overview is still there, then if you stealth Overview, then it's still going to be visible in old courses. New courses get Dashboard by default, and I don't see a problem with that. No, the, the problem is if you do an import from site to a new right. course, stealth tools do not import. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> so at least in in many cases, we've disabled the ability to import a stealth tool because you don't right. want users propagating tools. But the, you know. But the only thing that's in overview that the people are going to want to co copy is the site information display. That's it, and they can copy and paste that if they need to. If we've got a new tool to put it into, I don't see a big issue with that. Uh, they can't copy and paste it if they have a bunch of links to other tools because then all those yeah, links the, will break. The content comes over, though. That's not lost. The content that's on that site information display is is carried over automatically. It's yeah, the so layout the of the widgets. Information. The only that's thing that's different. It's in, the, it's in the site information. Yeah. 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 So you're not really losing content. All you're losing is the layout of the widgets, like how many columns of widgets you have and you know, which one's at the top of the page. You know, that's the only thing that would change. And I don't think there's a problem. Frankly, I mean, it's a new tool and it's going to just look different and they'll just have to learn to live with that. Um, Adrian, you're, you're sharing your Slack. Oh, all right. Okay, I don't want that. Well, it is something you probably don't want to do to people in the middle of a semester. Well, no. No, no. But I mean, new semesters have new features. No yeah, big deal. I, I, yeah, I don't. I, I almost think we're making a mountain out of a molehill here. I mean, the 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 release date is going to make it such that institutions won't it'll be an institutional choice whether they want to make this happen in mid-semester i can't imagine most institutions will you know the, the the vast majority of upgrades happen in summer and winter in between semesters you know so i mean i, I would see that being an institutional choice and an institutional problem to solve if it seems like the thing that that seems that is best at the institution it you know what? I mean, basically, this this is a problem we can deal with after the freeze date. Do you know what I mean? I mean, this 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 is this this is class as migration. This stuff, right? So we have we've got we've got room, we've got room to um, you know, to 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 kind of uh, flesh this stuff out after the freeze date. And I'm I'm really conscious. That I didn't I didn't want to take I didn't want to take up the entire teaching and learning meeting you know around this because I this this stuff's been dominating everything for weeks. So. Uh, yeah, we went we went way over, <laughs> but that's okay. 
Yeah, you wanted some Jira's, you know. You got Jira's to look at and things, you know. So if there's other things in the world <laughs> down the dashboard. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, and I'm but right, I think so. it's it's looking really great, and I really appreciate you showing us what you've got so far. Um, all this, once the pull request goes in, and you know all that happens, yeah. you'll be able to go to Nightly to look at it, and you know create Jira's and make comments, and you know um, indicate features that you think should be modified. So there's this is just the beginning of the yeah. opportunity to comment. These, these 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 are all these are all important concerns that people are raising about this and. Uh, you know, familiarity is an important thing, but like it's my uh, that, this, this is my migration stuff, and we can do all that after the free. I've got to get the PR in. I've I'm so late. I'm holding everything up now, and like I'm getting twitchy about it. So <laughs> I just want to get it in. I want to get it in. But we can fix the bugs once it's in. We can do that. We can still carry on afterwards with it. But uh, I want to. I just want to get it in and get that kind of that kind of checkpoint. Um, out with and breathe. Well, thank you again. Um, I'm gonna let you off the hook now so we can move on to at least one Jira. <laughs> We've got about 20 minutes left. We can get well, it. I'm, I'm glad everybody's so interested. I mean, it's, it's good yeah. that everybody's engaged with it. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I may, I may be sounding, uh, you know, um, un ungracious there, but I'm glad everybody's engaged with it because it's, it's important, you know. But, uh, I've been doing this for so long now. It's been solid, solid, solid thinking about this. Ten hour days every day thinking about it. I'm just I'm just looking forward to get the PR and then maybe having a having a week where I can just kind of think about something else and then then we'll come back to it and get stuck back in again. Yeah. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. Yep. Cool. Right. Okay. Jira's, please. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Thank you very much, um, right. and thanks everybody for your feedback. And you know, like you said, it's a it's a good discussion, and we're we're happy that people are excited about it and interested. So, um, we do have several Jiras here in the list. Um, does anybody want to you know step forward with one that they would like to talk about in particular? I know Tiffany, you have several, and Daniel had put one in. I don't see him on the call. Um, and then there was one that I put in. So um, is there any that you feel strongly about um, doing first, Tiffany? Um, well, I was particularly interested in 44116, um, Samago not obeying the, the due and late submission dates on a retake, and 42820. Uh, with due dates in red that should not be in red. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and, and do those. So um, we'll start off with the um, the first one, and I'll paste it here into the chat. Um, I can find it a little bit easier. Let me go ahead and share my screen just for the recording. All right, you want to take us through that one a little bit to explain the problem? Yeah, um, sure. So this is... Uh, more a question. What I'm concerned about is the lack of priority on this. I, I really think it should be raised in priority. So right now, um, in I guess it's a Kai 19 something. Um, if you create a quiz um, and allow a retake on it, uh, students are able to retake it past uh, the due date and past the late submission date. And um, I think that's a real problem uh, if students are able to take a test uh, past its its dates. Um, so oh, I think, I, I, think I remember this one. Raised. Yeah, this was the yeah. one that Andrea had brought up recently. Yeah. Um, so basically what happens is if you allow a retake, um, it's just indefinitely open. Like it never closes. Yeah. Um, for the person that you allow to retake. Yeah, and that's a problem. How do other folks feel about this? I think it was that's probably, yeah, it, it was um, classified as major, I guess, because it um, there's a workaround or it's not loss of functionality, there, but there's it is not a workaround. related. There's not a workaround because if it's open indefinitely and the instructor can't shut it down, uh, there's no workaround to prevent the student from doing that retake whenever they feel like, and I don't think that's appropriate. Um, instructors should have control over when a student's capable of submitting.
Anybody else have any? I, I think it's obvious. I, yeah. I totally agree. And I think it's a, a big deal. If a, if a teacher says, okay, I'll give you one week to retake it, and they can still retake it a month later, that's you, the teacher's lost control. Yep. Okay, so I'm logging in because I wasn't. Um, so I can comment on this. So um, I'm going to put that we recommend raising the priority. Oops. I want to get an understanding of what the instructor experience is going to be like, though, if they intend to allow retake beyond the due date, because there could be extenuating circumstances. In that case, would the instructor file an exception on the instrument, allowing yeah. a particular user to have a different date of submission? That's right, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so Heather brings up the point that the submissions are time and date stamped. Well, yes, they are, but if the instructor doesn't go back to look at when that time and date stamp occurred um, and manually change the grade, I mean, I don't think they should have to manually change the grade to prevent a student from from submitting at a later not date only that, if a, late date. Not only that, if a student realizes, hey, if I get a retake, I, it doesn't matter how long it you know, I can still do it. They can take it after the teacher says and just expect that they will get a grade. And then they get a, you know, if the teacher makes a remediation, the student has taken it fraudulently because he thought he had an indefinite amount of time. Yeah, so I think the instructor it's, might assume that it's going to cut off and it doesn't. And well, I, I think that's the real problem. Instructors are going to assume it's going to cut off because it does Inten intentionally does, you know, or has in the past. Um, uh, I would assume. So yeah. would this be a critical? I don't think yeah. it's a blocker, but probably critical, right? Yeah, I, I think it's at least critical, yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and move it if anybody wants to reevaluate that. They can, but I put a note on it that we talked about that one. Okay, any other thoughts on this, Jira? All right, cool. So we'll move on to our next one, which is um, 42820. So this is um, a future date that is displaying in red. So if a, a quiz is due um, in you know, the next month or, I don't know, 14 days or something, uh, it displays in red on the instructor's view. And traditionally, red bold text means late, available late. Uh, in, in assignments, in tests and quizzes, it's always been the case, uh, at least for students, that the red text denotes uh, available late. And here it is a, uh, a new feature to add red on the instructor view for quizzes that are due soon. And I don't think that's appropriate. Um, I think it's a departure from traditional behavior. And, uh, and I think this should be reverted. And whenever I've seen the red font come up, it's, um, it's not, it doesn't meet color contrast standards. The red that's being used is the standard red that's always used and it, it fails on color checking. Uh, so we need to make sure that the default red that's used when it is used is darker. Okay. So um, I, I think that if if something is available late, we can display it in dark red with late in parentheses after it. But other than that, uh, red should not be used for for uh, dates, especially if they're in the future. Yeah. Well, the whole instructor thing. This is just this is just welcoming more support calls. There's no indication on the instructor screen why this is red. Yeah, red is usually an indication of something that's wrong, like an alert or something past due. So, 
So there are in in my screen cap that I just posted here. I don't know if any of these examples have it, but in my example, if you click on that link, you've got uh, if red truly indicates in the next 14 days, then August the 20th should have also been in red, but it wasn't. So it doesn't work and it's a silly idea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I think if, if Camelot, it's going to be such a silly place, <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's going to be some indicator of, of something, uh, then it should only be for late things. And it should also say late in parentheses after that um, date and time. So the the solution I'm advocating for is no red at all. Just take it out for this whole 14 day thing. Agreed. Yeah, I think it should just be removed. And I tried to go back in JIRAs to find out when it put was put in and what the use case was, but I couldn't find one. Yeah, we spent some time looking for that last week and came up with eyes, didn't find anything. So maybe it's a mistake in the first place. <laughs> Well, that is this JIRA, right? 42820, isn't this the, the where it was put in? I and think it needs so. to be removed. Yeah. 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 So, um, so Tino, this group. Well, no, this seems to be the JIRA in which it's fixed because um, Bernard, Bernardo says uh, now it will count a full 24 hour days. Well, I think the they fixed the, the, yeah, they fixed the time when it turns red, I think, is what they fixed. But, but it's, it's weird that it was, it was instituted everywhere, but there was no discussion around why it would be, or um, it, no one actually presented a problem that it was solving. At least we haven't been able to find one, which is, you know, you generally need to go through those kinds of hoops before you do something that changes um, behavior like that. It, it, it seems like this needs a separate JIRA because we're commenting relating behavior for something which has been fixed, but which we feel is behavior that shouldn't be there in the first place. So maybe it needs a defect JIRA for the fact that there's red text there at all. Yeah, I think I think, I think, I think it's a new Jira. Okay, so we'll open a new Jira. Because everybody needs a new Jira. <laughs> oh, blimey, let's just use this Jira. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Reopen and revert it. <laughs> this should be reverted. Die, die, kill, sucker. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to add this note here. Um, so we'll open a new one about only showing late things. I can take that as a to-do. Um, only late things in red um, with late in parentheses. But uh, this one we're um, saying should be reverted, correct? Yeah. Yeah. OK. Let me make sure I put that in my comment. I mean, this is this is a switch. This is a switch thing as well, isn't it? I mean, this is you know how how are we using red, like elsewhere? You know, yeah, the... yeah. I mean, there this was a change. Like I didn't know this until this juror came up. It didn't really. I didn't know that this change had been made. So there wasn't any discussion about it um, <laughs> that I know of, unless it happened in yeah. areas where I was not present. Um, so, yeah, it seems like a pretty big behavior change yeah i mean it just means something's gone wrong to me red you know like <laughs> and it's not gone wrong yeah has it in this case you know it's just a it should be an amber you know like an amber alert, <laughs> amber alert. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I mean, I see, I understand why we had, you know, a due date in red when it was late, because that's no longer the due date. There's, it's a late date, but we don't indicate the late date on that page. So that's fine. I think that makes sense in red, but not um, this case where it's, uh, where it's showing you the actual date that's also in the future. Yep. Yep. I agree. Yep. Okay, so we commented on this one. Um, we might have time for one more. We got eight minutes left, so we might have time for one more quick one. I had the the penalty option one. If if nobody has a a burning Jira that they want to discuss, this one was one um, that I think Alan had put in, and um, let me paste the link in the chat here if people want to open it up. Um, basically, he was requesting a new item type in the gradebook for penalty items because the gradebook um, does not accept negative scores. Um, at least it, the gradebook classic used to at one point, several versions back. Uh, the current gradebook does not. And, um, and sometimes faculty want to deduct um, points for, for like excessive absences, for example, um, where they would want to be able to put a negative point value to something. Um, so the feature request is whether or not um, this should be kind of a, its own item. Um, and also, is that a common use case? So I'd like to hear from, from you guys uh, what, what your experience is. Is this something that you would like to have, or is this something that could potentially be a problem? I, I would like to um, pass, well, if you have a negative value in gradebook, which I think is a good idea, would you also put a negative value? Because I don't think it's there right now in in some of the uh, direct assessment tools or would it go into the grader you know what i'm saying because so, like like you've got a, a a plagiarism question on an assignment can you deduct those points in the assignment or do you so have right to go now, to the gradebook to do that right now tests and quizzes has an adjustment feature that allows you to input negative numbers uh, to penalize students on their score. And in fact, I did a test because I was trying to see if uh, if Gradebook didn't like calculations with negative numbers and that's why it's disabled. And as far as I can tell, it's just an idiot proofing uh, feature to disable negative inputs to Gradebook because I was able to input a negative score in a quiz such that the student had a negative score in the gradebook and it calculated just fine. Um, so I, I think my concern with this feature is adding a new item type that could confuse people. I personally think we should just allow negative numbers in the gradebook. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, allow a zero point gradebook item and allow inputs of negative numbers. And I'm sure if students are seeing that and get upset about it, they'll come to their professor and tell them, hey, you gave me a negative point value for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree, because, actually. I think it, the ability to enter, enter an, a negative should be allowed, but I don't like the idea of a new item type. Yeah, that, that's what I'm concerned about, because people are already confused sometimes by the um, by the extra credit item, like how does that get calculated? How do I use it? Um, and I think that having another item type option uh, could be confusing. There was one proposal in this, in the comments in this ticket to make it an adjustment item, similar to tests and quizzes adjustments, where it could be either an extra credit or a penalty. Uh, and I think that's even more confusing because people already are confused about extra credit. So adding more uh, to that, I think could be confusing. Um, there was a proposal to put a tooltip, but yeah. that was too much text. That was way too much text for a tooltip and also difficult to make accessible. Um, so I, yeah, mean, I, I understand I, I understand the desire to make it a separate item type for the fact that you don't want the total score uh, to be increased by it. But I think if we allow a zero point gradebook item, then we can still achieve the same goal of having you know the zero point gradebook item and give it a negative grade to penalize
Anybody else? I agree. I think it should be negative allowed, but no new item. Um, and, and zero point value allowed. Because yes. right now you have yeah. to have one point, or uh, maybe it's a point yeah. five well, point. A, you have to have some. Yeah, you can't have null, so yeah. it doesn't it doesn't take a, a zero. Right. So allowing zero and greater numbers as the grade book uh, point value, item point value, uh, and then allowing negative inputs. Does anybody else want to advocate for a different? No, I think I agree with Tiffany. Um, All right. Cool. And, and actually, we're, we're one of the, the institutions that was asking about this in the first place. So. <laughs> All right. well, I mean, you could still, I will. You could still yeah, use I'll your zero point on here. item for other purposes, right? So you could use it for kind of an extra credit. But if you wanted to make it like an extra credit that you apply to everybody, you know, instead of like the current extra credit. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think there could be other use cases for a zero point grade book item. Well, and, and, just, and just the ability to put in negative numbers to begin with, because theoretically, I mean, another use case, if you if you really wanted to penalize students, suppose they had um, an assignment and you penalize them minus 10 percent for every day they're late. And I know people that do that. Um, if they got a bad enough score, then you could actually get into a negative number. Um, if if they were late enough so that um you know i mean some people might just leave it at zero but some people might want to be really punitive and and actually give well, them a negative score and you can do it in tests and quizzes right, right. so you can do yeah. it with the adjustment column in tests and quizzes and give them an actual negative yep. value so if your quiz is worth one point and you give them a negative 11 they're going to get negative 10 in the grade book right so right or, or if you enable negative um penalties for guessing wrong and they only answer a couple questions incorrectly they could get into an, a negative number no. all by themselves no that that um guessing penalty it'll zero out at zero it won't Does it? go it doesn't automatically go less than zero i don't think yeah. i i don't know as i'd ever experimented with it i just sort of assume. yeah uh, so, some of the um questions like the uh multiple um multiple choice multiple selection question uh that scoring when it could technically be a negative value based on the the sort of partial credit i forget what it's called um correct minus incorrect or whatever when you can i was thinking multiple choice where you can yeah. put in a penalty right and true false yeah the guessing penalty yeah i don't think that it um automatically will go less than zero but um but it is possible well, i guess we are out of time so i apologize for cutting you guys off but i do want to be respectful of folks time um i will add a, a comment to this feature request about what we discussed i just didn't want to try to do it while everyone was talking but um if you have uh, other JIRAs that you want to talk about at a later um, TNL call, please feel free to um, let me know. I'd be happy to put them on the agenda. I don't think we have a speaker for next time. Is that right, Charles? We don't have anyone lined Not up? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, so it'll probably be a repeat um, of today, Jira Palooza, and if Adrian has anything he feels like showing, we might get a preview. <laughs> if not, then, you know, Jira it is. So, but if anybody would like to present something, again, please let me, Charles, or Trisha know, and we'd be um, thrilled to, to put you on the agenda for our next call. So, um, thank you, everybody. And Jira. you guys are Cheers, cheers, cheers. I've got, I've got, a, I've got a quick question before, before we adjourn. Yeah, if, if yeah, you yeah. don't mind, how many people on the call um, are using Big Blue Button at their institution? Just out of interest. Boo! Oh. Boo! <laughs> right. We use Zoom. <laughs> yeah, we use Zoom. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think we're probably gonna. I'm probably gonna try and get um, either Derek or Kenny to reach out 
to our clients and, and kind of poll them on this, actually. Yeah, LAMP is the only one I can think of. Yeah. Well, and even then, the weekly meetings have moved to Zoom because we're doing the webinar format now. Ah, oh, I didn't know you guys moved to Zoom. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and Martin and I just had a few brief comments the other day, and I said, big blue button's not keeping up, are they? And he says, no, not really. Okay, so that's that's interesting. So when when you say they're not keeping up, are, are you talking about the Sakai integration? Uh, not the, not the integration specifically, but uh, like some of the user features and that kind of thing. Right. Okay. Just it it just looks rougher. It's it's a little bit more clunky. It's more awkward f for dealing with large groups of people. Right. This is, this, is, this is when you're into the the big blue button interface, basically. What you what you're talking yeah about. yeah. Right. Even though they've d done a lot of improvements last year, so, um, but it's still so much slicker on Zoom, and Zoom's adding pro features like live captioning and that kind of thing. Right. So, okay. I mean, the reason the reason I'm asking um, the reason I'm asking is we we might be doing a bit of work on the actual Sakai uh, tool, you know, the tool integration. So the Sakai tool part of it, we've been asked mm -hmm. whether we do some work on that to free up um, more development time, you know, for the people over at Blindside to actually work on the core, the core thing. Mm -hmm. so, so that's wow. interesting. That's interesting. So thanks. Yeah. Okay. That's why. I, there that's might why be I'm some talking. individual institutions in LAMP that are staying with Big Blue Button. I don't know. I haven't pulled them individually. Some of the smaller ones, but uh, so I don't know how many of in Johnson has invested, for instance, in. They've gone Zoom Pro for all faculty, and right. um, but but I don't know like Clear Creek or or what you know some yeah. of the other smaller ones are doing. I mean, I've got, I mean, as far as I know, Zoom uh, Zoom are offering some good good kind of like pricing packages for you know for their um, for their service. So you know, it's a, it's a tough call basically. Anyway, yeah. okay, I just thought I, mean, I'd ask. I, I don't. Oh, cool. I found Zoom a lot easier to use and, and better supportive of um, uh, screen sharing and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So I, I moved our accessibility meetings to Zoom because I had so many problems trying to use Big Blue Button for screen share that. Um, I right. And up. or uploading your presentation onto Big Blue Button can be a problem sometimes. It's very, very clunky when you're the presenter and you want to switch from this presentation to that presentation or you have to get on early to, you know, the upload process is a little bit awkward. Right. Yeah. OK. OK, that's that's helpful. I mean, it's, it's good information for whether, you know, where, um, how much time I, I make available of myself to work on the uh, on the uh, Sakai part of it. So thank you. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. And um, have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you again next time. Good meeting, Wilma. Thanks, thank Wilma. you. Thanks, yep. Adrian. Hi, Wilma. Yep, thank you, Hi, Adrian. Hi, everybody. Bye. See you all.